Yeah. Well, congratulations on this one. Um, Thank you. I really liked it. And, you know, I, I just want to start by saying, because I, I was reading some stuff that you, um, some interviews that you had done earlier about this film, and you said, you know, it's kind of your love later, letter to Asian mothers and stuff. But I have to tell you, it's not just Asian mothers. It's everybody can relate to this, you know? Yeah. And I just personally could as well, too. And I, I, I wanted to know where this all originated for you, because it's so... Good. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, first of all, I don't think it's just for Asian mothers either. Sandra O oh says that okay. in the film. But I wrote it to position a, a mother as hero. Yes. A grandmother as hero, regardless of color. Um, but definitely she's from another culture. And that, I think, we're, a lot of us are from other cultures. We were raised with slightly different rules in the mainstream. Um, I, it definitely, the, the idea came to me um, through my relationship with my mother, mm -hmm. really, and seeing how she was a, she had heard of women's lib, she grew up with it, she never really enacted it in her house other than to raise her daughters as right. independent women. Yeah. So right away, I, I, that, that, just, that difference in the, what, what she said and what she did, I always noticed. And I thought, when I was a kid, when I first started writing films, I, I thought, oh, I, gonna make, I would love to Freaky Friday with my mom. <laughs> right? Just like, yeah. just have her go to the punk rock show and me <laughs> rub my dad's feet all day, right. you know. <laughs> Okay, really? Okay. Yeah, but I was like, she should, because she just can't, like, there's so many disconnects. She's like, I'm, I'm a grown woman now, I'm a director. And yeah. she's like, you're going to a show by yourself? Yeah. Like, that that seems dangerous to her. Um, uh, seems dangerous uh, uh, from a societal frowning on me level, as, a, as well as just protection, you yeah. know? And it's like, no, we, I, I have any, I have any entitlement as any man. Mm -hmm. Or I act as if I do. Sure. In reality, I don't necessarily do. Um, but, but I, I walk around like I do. Yeah. Like there's no reason why I can't go to the show. There's a guy by himself here. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, so that, so the idea sort of sparked from living, growing up in my household. But the the moment that it really hit me was my mother turning to me in the car and saying, she was gossiping about a friend, and she said the cat has caught a new fish in Chinese, and I went, what? What are you talking about? What fish, huh? And she, and she said, that's what we say when, you know, he's got someone else. And it was that speci specificity of how she spoke about it, mm -hmm. that there was a term, there was a phrase for it, right. you know, that immediately, and, and I had heard of many, many uh, stories of infidelity in my family, mm -hmm. in the Women being the victims. Of Interesting. Right? Yeah. Um, and that, like, in particular, one family member, she never, she didn't move out, she never let on. Yeah. Until he slowly stopped seeing her. And I thought, how interesting that, as opposed to if that were to happen in my generation, with my rules, there would be forced, th you know, if we were going to stay together, there'd be forced therapy, there'd be so much talk, there'd be catharsis. None of that. She never got any of that. She, she uh, and, and I thought, how, what a different breed of women and what how courageous one is to yeah. be able to be like that. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, and let's face it, I mean, you know, um, your casting in this movie is, is you know, brilliant, amazing. And to have Chang Fei Fei do, you know, be the lead and wow, I mean, just to foresee her doing this because we all know what she can mm -hmm. she can do. She mm -hmm. can kick butt. Like, yeah. You know, we know that, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, to see her in this role in the beginning and then how she evolves and everything. Um, but it's very interesting because, you know, anybody, any, listen, you know, my mother's I could not see her going out if something like this were to have happened and trying to do the things that she does in this movie, you mm -hmm. know? And so it's so brave, and um, I, I just think it's so important that you did this film. Well, as as, uh, as Maria uh, Pepe and Sandra said, I saw in an interview, um, Pepe says, I hope this film frees the Marias. Mm. And Sandra goes, yeah, let's free all the Marias. <laughs> and I think that's exactly it. <laughs> Hashtag, yeah. I think, I, I think that, that sh for sure uh, it is very, just as, just as any film, it's hard for us to be Superman yeah. as an audience member, but Superman can inspire us to be our own superwomen. In, in, in individual, in our own little ways. And that's what I hope with this film, that it, it is an empowerment story. That in, in this climate of powerlessness, in general, doesn't matter which gender you are, how old you are, we're all feeling a little out of control. Mm -hmm. 
that we actually have a little bit more power than we think. Yeah. You just have to bring it out in you. You have to bring it out in you. You have to be brave. You have to be brave. You have to make the choice. And that that's the whole film is her moving towards knowing she has choice. Yeah. Yeah. I can't even believe that it's been 23 years since you made a film with Sandra Oh. Like, to me, it just feels like yesterday. Was well, it, did it feel like that to you? I did a film with her in 2004 uh, yeah. called Long Life, Happiness, and Prosperity. Yeah. So we've worked together since. Okay, yeah. okay, right. So, but when you, sorry, since the first time, I'm sorry. Oh, since yeah, the first time, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, so you've had this relationship for almost, you know, quarter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 25 yeah. years. Yeah. But was it just kind of like when you get back with her, it's kind of like old home week, I would think. Oh, yeah. Sandra and I, it's. <laughs> It was, it's so natural for us to work together. It, I didn't even, it didn't even feel strange, especially since I, we had Peter Wunsterf, who's my director of photography, and a couple of the days we had Greg Middleton, who's gone on to do Game of Thrones as a DP, yeah. but he was my camera operator. He, he just said, Mina, if you need any help, I'm pitching in on this project with you. Nice. And I was like, my camera operator got sick, so can you come in? And so it was me and Peter and Greg and Sandra, and that was the original Double Happiness yeah. team, wow. right? And Steve Hedges' producer, too, who's producing this. Uh, and she just looked at me, she was like, Oh my God, I feel 20. And I was like, I do too. And it's like, and she kept going, we, we've aged so well. And I said, yeah. <laughs> You've aged well. Oh God, no. You guys look the same. Exactly the same. I'm sorry. I don't know what Oh, it's you're hilarious. Fabulous. I saw something, uh, CBC's archived an interview that we did during the Double Happiness Tour. And I was just like, we were children. How could they even let us make anything and give us money? We look like kids. <laughs> <laughs> but Tiff's been very good to you. I yes, mean, you know, I, I've I mean, premiered you say, like, all films here. They, yeah, they have. They are like family. I, I, I mean, I grew up with Cameron in a way. Yeah. You know, like yeah. in terms of, uh, he was. He just started programming um, the Canadian films when I uh, got Double Happiness. Yeah. Out. And so here we are now, and it's like it really is when we when we when we see each other when Piers or um, uh, Michelle or or Cameron and I run into each other in the street. It's big warm family hugs yeah. you know like I saw I bumped into I saw Pierce twice yesterday because of running <laughs> around and he just the second time he just walked across the street and just gave me a high five oh, and I was like yep yeah, that's we don't need there. to we don't need to do that the way I just talked to you a moment ago <laughs> so <it's, laughs> well I'm asking all um, my Canadian talent this question I know it's Canada 150 this year very exciting aside from your own films what's your favorite Canadian film I'm uh, on the spot, I know. Okay, <laughs> well, one of my favorite Canadian films is Anne-Marie Fleming's You Take Care Now. It's a 20-minute short uh, that was done in 1990, I think. Um, and it really set to me, said to me that um, we can get inside a woman's head, very specifically in an entertaining fashion, and still be moved. And she's, she's done some of the bravest um, sort of narrative, hybrid, documentary, experimental work. Um, and I, I, I still look to her work as um, such a symbol of the breaking the frontiers of what one can do with story. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Well, congratulations on this. You've done a really great job. And, Thank uh, you. I know we'll see you back at TIFF again. I don't have to worry about that. You know, <laughs> just keep bringing them to I'll us, just okay? keep bringing Phil. Yeah.